Do the, the name of the project is Attracting Youth to a Sustainable uh, Supply Chain and Workforce. That task force <coughs> and that strategy basically sets out to ask and answer two questions. How can we prepare youth for work? And collectively, how can we help employers attract and retain youth? The unemployment rate for youth in Alberta is consistently higher for other age groups. On a national level, we also know, uh, based on the Canadian Supply Chain uh, Human Resources Update Study, that and this looked at things across <coughs> Canada. At the time that the study was released, which was March uh, 2012, there were 27,000 un unfilled supply chain uh, positions across Canada. And so when you start to think about your own businesses and the way our economy is dependent on supply chain and supply chain people and people with the right skills, <clears throat> then we start to see the, enormous, the enormity of the challenge that we have ahead of us. We also begin to see uh, that we have a population that is not engaged, that we have a certain number of young people who aren't in school, who aren't working, and, and we need to understand why. I mean, when you say supply chain, nobody understands it. Yeah. But when you say that nothing moves, nothing happens in Alberta, no matter what industry you're in, without supply chain, people start to pay attention. I mean, you think about it, there's no business, no organization, nothing happens here without supply chain. And yet, do people understand that? And I, and I think we have an image problem uh, as an industry. I mean, most people, most large companies at least, certainly Safeway, well, Walmart, uh, and other, other companies around the room, uh, you think of us as a retailer. And yeah, we sell groceries. <coughs> but you don't think of us as having one of the largest trucking fleets in the province of Alberta or operating one of the largest manufacturing operations. So. Uh, I don't think people understand what supply chain actually is, and, and uh, until we more clearly define that, gets back to your point, uh, we have a problem. I'm a perfect example of someone who didn't even have a clue what that term meant when I started my career, right? And I think there's so many kids that today don't even understand that. So it's really important to make sure that there's knowledge and that it's broader than what one might have as a perspective of what supply chain or logistics is, right? So the kid has delivered pizza yeah. for Pizza Hut, yeah. that's actually a supply chain job. That's you right. Know, think about that's it, right. right? Absolutely. That's discipline, yeah. that's, that's uh, leadership skills, <laughs> that's, that's right. entrepreneurship. Exactly. And Betty Rowan said, as a young mom, I was in supply chain. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see that youth are given the opportunity to understand that this is more than a warehouse job. You could work in a warehouse for 10 years and only see a portion of it still so it's a matter of keeping them their interest and keeping them engaged and challenged and that is huge because what we're finding is with youth and different sides like that they within a year we probably have maybe a quarter of them left uh, but the industry shoots itself in the foot somewhat too because i was talking to the folks here earlier and saying well uh, if you want to be a line haul driver, basically insurance says 25 and older. So uh, it was back when you said, Linda, was, okay, you knock on the door and they say, okay, here I am. I'm 18. I got my class one license, ready to go. Well, come back and get some experience. Well, who's going to hire me? How do we get this experience? So it's that catch-22. So One of the biggest challenges that I find with young people entering the workforce are some of the absolute most basic things like grammar, mathematical skills. Um, communication skills, I mean just some real basics that seem to be difficult to find in good quality. Some of those absolute basic skills that some many youth seem to, to not be getting in other organizations or other uh, paths until they get to the workplace. And by that point then it, it can be really detrimental for them if they haven't had someone coach and mentor them on those things. Communication skills, the ability to work on a team, yeah. self-discipline, leadership skills maybe. Um, and uh, our current education system doesn't necessarily, and I'm talking high school, doesn't necessarily do a good job uh, developing those. As an employer, I find it hard to, they're really high maintenance. They, they expect a lot of acknowledgement, a lot of, you know, recognition. And it's sometimes in a busy day, it's hard to say, yeah, thanks for showing up for work on time today. I really appreciate it. So that's like sort of a challenge that, that we have with that group of employees a little bit. 
for us, the most important thing is being able to fit within that culture, and, and it's just your attitude. So if we have an employee who's great technically, but you know, just really isn't a great person to be around, that's a failure for us. We, you can always train that technical piece, but you can't give somebody the right attitude. Interestingly enough, my best experience and best hires probably in the last few years have actually been immigrants that come with education and experience, even in entry level roles. Um, they're, they're motivated, they've got the skills, they've got the experience, and, and sadly that just shows that there's definitely something missing in our own environment that our own uh, young, young people aren't able to come to the table with that. So for us it's interesting, when we get applicants who grew up on a farm, they immediately have a leg up because there's an assumption that they can roll up their sleeves, they are creative, they can fix things, you know, they can solve problems in the field. However, you do need to have a willingness to learn and educate yourself and continue education because we do, it's a requirement of your job if you work with us, for sure. I think one thing for Job Ready, too, is I think the motivation people to want to work and um, their presence that they even have in their interviews, the way they dress when they come in for their interviews. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's just show some respect for yourself or the person who's interviewing you and you know try show us that you're trying to get this job. I think that some of the basic skills like that would be really... Yeah. It's more important to have someone with the right credibility and common sense yeah. and the right level of it. If we're calling you in for an interview, we like you. You're you're hired, right? Yeah, Once you come in, <laughs> that's going to be the check or the X, right? So it's really up to you to. Yeah. It's almost your job to lose. Right. To exactly. Win. It's your. That's exactly it. It's like you've got the job. Yeah. Also, part of the motivational challenge is making people understand. Well, you may be working in the yard in the rain, sorting through tarps to mobilize for a huge hospital project or LRT or something, but think about the big picture. You're part of building an LRT with 17 stations or you're part of building a huge hospital, something like that. So just you know, kind of getting a little bit the bigger picture, so that's interesting. Give them the inspiration to see what they're missing or what they're lacking and where they need to build and uh, find an industry like um, supply chain where yeah, there's so many possibilities because it's, it's very misunderstood out there. I think one of the ways to overcome that challenge is to have a more well-rounded high school experience. Like university isn't the be-all, end-all, and it's, it is one option. So, and again, in addition to teaching people about history and calculus and chemistry and some of the things that would lend themselves well to university um, or careers that require university education just start talking about the trades and that's how to get high school kids thinking about careers it's got to start in the high school and uh, uh, about five years ago Safeway actually created its own comp strategy so uh, we actually have a website uh, that has um, uh, logistics supply chain careers on it as well as retail and, and others. The website if you want to look it up it's kind of cool it's called jobpod.ca. Loblaw has also implemented a grad at Loblaw program which is catered towards people who are taking but they're already in school taking their um, supply chain management bachelors and stuff so we do we will hire people who are in their third and fourth year as assistant supervisors yeah so within Graham for example we will talk about um, we will talk about uh, shop yard or warehouse positions as an opportunity to learn the business and get an overview and then later maybe move into a project become a project coordinator or a supervisor or some sort of leadership role or another one would be well you would start in a logistics capacity and then get an overview of what the business is like, get a sense for the numbers, and then maybe move into accounting or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we will bring them in from an entry level, but we will groom them along and so they can see that there is a, a map out for them and a career there for them. And their education is partially funded through the company as well. Great. Back to attracting some things, what we're uh, doing in our second year now of our Road Nights program, uh, 
where we have, uh, there's about five different uh, uh, companies have provided senior drivers that come in that we have, uh, you know, PR, uh, speaking uh, engagements for them and they come out and so they're, they're ambassadors representing the industry and we've had just a real positive response by going to career fairs uh, with these folks and also they bring the shiny tractor trailer and stuff and they talk about all the careers within uh, transportation which is an <laughs> eye-opener to many of them. You've helped us, you've absolutely uh, enriched our, our initial thoughts, you've helped us expand what's possible, what's not possible and uh, and now we'll do the same conversation with young people um, and see what they have to tell us, what works for them, and see if we can't, by the middle of June, put a plan together. Okay, thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda.